Yo yo, what's good YouTube? In today's lesson, we're going to learn a simple algorithm that can be used to improve your code efficiency. Before I show you this, let's run through a problem together. If you're given a list of numbers like this and you were asked to find the two unique numbers that add up to a target value, how would you write code to solve this? Feel free to pause the video here and try to come up with your own solution. Cool, whether you came up with a solution or not, that's okay. Now let's do it together. Before writing any code, we should start by visualizing the problem. So draw the example out and let's run through the example together. As humans, we can just use our eyes to spot that 2 and 9 add up to the value 11. However, if the list grows in size, it will be very difficult for us to spot the two numbers with our own eyes. And that's why computers exist. With code, we can solve this problem easily by just brute forcing it, where we basically try each and every combination possible. For example, we can do 5 plus 4, 5 plus 2, 5 plus 8, 5 plus 1, and 5 plus 9. And if none of these values work, we can move forward to 4 and try 4 plus 5, 4 plus 2, 4 plus 8, 4 plus 9, 4 plus 9. And eventually we'll get 2 plus 9, which equals 11. Cool, so to help you guys visualize this better, let's remove these lines. And let's make a copy of this list and put it right below it. Now let's grab the pen. So basically all we're doing is 5 plus 4, 5 plus 2, 5 plus 8, 5 plus 1, 5 plus 9. Then we do 4 plus 5, 4 plus 2, 4 plus 8, 4 plus 1, 4 plus 9. And if we keep going... Don't mind me, I'm just going to speed up the video. And then finally, we're going to get something that looks like this. It's a bit messy, but you get the point. We're basically taking each number from the first list and adding it to each number in this list, excluding itself. So to put this into code, all we have to do is just write a nested for loop. So we can do for n1 in list of numbers. And then after that, hit enter and type for n2 in the list of numbers. And now hit enter. And just to help you visualize, let's do print n1, comma, n2. And now let's click run. And as you can see, we've got 55, 54, 52, 58, 51, 59, which basically goes through each combination starting with 5. So I didn't really explain nested for loops before, but just to help you guys visualize, this first for loop here basically corresponds with this first list. And the second for loop corresponds to this list here. So basically when we do print n1, n2, we're basically printing 55, 54, 52, 58, 51, 59. And once this loop finishes, we move forward to the next number, which is 4. And we keep doing this until we reach the end of the list. So one of the requirements of the problem is that we can only use unique numbers. We can account for this very easily by just doing if n1 does not equal n2, and then we can check if and n1 plus n2 equals equals target. And if this is true, we can just print n1 and n2. And now let's click run. And as you can see, we got 2 and 9, which are the values that we're looking for. But we have one problem here where we see two values. So we can fix this very easily by wrapping the code inside a function so that we can exit early with a return statement. So let's do define target sum and this will take two parameters, list of numbers and a target and put a colon and now let's indent everything. And after we found the solution, we can just return early and now let's call our function. So we can do target sum brackets list of numbers and then here we can do target and now let's click run. And as you can see, we got the solution once, 2 and 9. Cool, now let's analyze the runtime of this code. So here we have a for loop, which is O of n. Then we have another for loop, which is O of n. Then we have this if statement, which is just O of 1. And here we have a print statement, which is just O of 1. So since this is nested, this is basically O of n squared. And since these are just O of 1, it doesn't affect the dominant factor, which is O of n squared. So basically our solution runs in O of n squared time. And now let's take a look at the graph. As you can see, O n squared is horrible. Um, do you guys think we can do better? If your answer is yes, then you're correct. In fact, we can bring the runtime down to O n log n using the special algorithm that I'll teach you today. So the special algorithm is no other than sorting. If you don't know much about sorting algorithms, there's actually a lot of different ways to sort. In fact, when I did my computer science degree, we had to learn most of them on this list. However, I was never asked in an interview to implement a sorting algorithm. So in this series, we're not going to cover how each algorithm works. However, if you have free time, feel free to search up some of these algorithms on YouTube and watch a quick video about how each one works. If you're lazy, don't worry, I got you. 
Just remember that every language has a built-in sort function. And the most optimal runtime for a sorting algorithm is just big O of n log n. And make sure to write this down. So you're probably wondering, how does sorting even help us? Well, after we sort the list, we're going to get something that looks like this. Now the numbers are sorted in ascending order, where basically the smallest number is on the left and the biggest number is on the right. And now we can apply a technique called two pointers where we basically keep track of two positions inside the list. So this left arrow here keeps track of the current smallest value. So we can just call this the low. And then this purple arrow here keeps track of the current biggest number. So we can call this the high. And all we're doing in this algorithm is we're taking the low and we're adding it to the high, which will give us a sum value. And now we can take this sum value and compare it with the target. And now we have three different scenarios to consider. The first one is if the sum equals the target. So in this example, our low is 1 and our high is 9. So 1 plus 9 will give us 10. So in this example, 10 does not equal our target. So now we can go to our next case. So now we check, is this sum greater than the target? So in this case, 10 is greater than 9. So when the sum is greater than the target, we want to decrease our sum. To achieve this, all we have to do is move this high pointer to the left. So now our low stays as 1, and now we want to add the new high, which is 8. So now we get 9. So as you can see, moving the high pointer to the left will decrease the sum. And then we want to do these checks again. So now we check if the sum equals the target, and our sum does equal our target. So now we're basically done. And in the last case, if our sum is less than the target, what we want to do is basically move the low pointer to the right, which will basically increase our sum. So let's run through one more example together. So let's change the target to 7 instead. So right now our low and high is 1 and 9, so let's add them together. So 1 plus 9 will give us 10. So right now our sum is greater than the target. So basically, we can just move our high pointer to the left. So now we have 1 plus 8, which will give us 9. So right now our sum is still greater than the target. So we can move our high pointer to the left again. So now we have 1 and 5. So 1 plus 5 equals 6. And now basically our sum is less than our target. So now we can move the low pointer to the right. And now we get 2 plus 5, which equals 7. And there you go. Our sum equals our target. And we are done. Cool. Now to the fun part. Let's turn this to code. So first, let's create a function. So let's do define target sum. And this will take two parameters, a list of numbers, and a target. So first, we want to sort the list. So all we have to do is type list of numbers and do dot sort. Next, we want to keep track of the two positions. So here we have an example list. And I'm going to label the indexes to make our lives easier. So the first number starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So now let's create the variable low, which starts at 0, which is the beginning of the list. And now let's create a variable high, and let's set it to 5. So what we're doing here is we're hard coding the value 5. But if we got a different list of numbers with a different length, then 5 wouldn't work. But instead, we should be more flexible so that we can account for any size list. So instead, we can use the len function. So len list of numbers. And then here, we can subtract 1. Cool. Now we want to account for the three different scenarios. So let's create one variable to keep track of the sum. So I'll call it s, and this will equal low plus high. So the first condition is if s equals equals target, then we can just return a list with the low and high. And for the next scenario is elif s is greater than target. So in this case, we want to move the high pointer to the left. So if our high pointer is 5, we want to go to the left. So that means we have to go to 4. And basically to do that, we just subtract 1 from the high. So now we can do high minus equals 1. And then lastly, we just do lf s less than target. And then we add a colon. And here, basically, we just do low plus equals 1 to move the left pointer one position to the right. Cool, this looks great. But we want to repeat this logic multiple times each time the positions are updated. So if you remember, we can use a while loop in this scenario because a while loop allows us to control how we want to loop as opposed to a for loop. So let's add a while statement. So while, so now we have to give it a condition. So in this case, the condition that we want is while the low is less than the high. We want to use this condition because we don't want the low pointer to cross the high pointer. Because once the high and the low cross, 
It basically means that we'll be doing redundant work because we've already visited those low and high values. Cool, so now all we have to do is indent these lines. And one more thing we can do is instead of doing this LFS less than target, we can just put a else statement here. So the reason for this is because there are three scenarios in total where the first we check if S equals target and the second is whether S is more than target. And now we only have one case left, so we can just use an else statement to catch it. Cool, so now let's call our function. So we can just copy this, and in line 19, let's type print, and then paste the function call. And before we hit run, I think I forgot to do one thing. So here we're adding low plus high, which is the positions of the numbers. But we actually want to add the numbers itself. So to get the numbers, all we have to do is copy list of numbers. So here, list of numbers, and add it here as well. And also, instead of returning the low and high, we just want to return the numbers. So now we can do low and high. So now let's click run. And as you can see, we got the values 2 and 9, which sums up to 11. So instead of using 11 as a target, let's use 7. And now let's click run. And as you can see, we got 2 and 5, which adds up to 7. So the final thing that we do is to analyze the runtime of the algorithm. So first, we did a sort here, which is basically O of n log n. Setting these variables is just O of 1, O of 1. And here we have a while loop. And in the worst case for this while loop, one of these arrows will move to the other n. So in the worst case, we'll have to visit at least n minus 1 numbers, which is basically just O of n. And the rest of these statements here are all just O of 1. So the dominant factor here is the sorting, which is O of n log n. As you can see, by doing something simple like sorting, we were able to bring our runtime from O n squared all the way down to O n log n. And just for fun, do you think we can do better? In the next video, I'll show you how we can bring this down to O of n. Cool, so just to recap, whenever you have a problem that deals with a list of items, see whether sorting would help you improve the efficiency. And also, remember that the runtime of sorting is O of n log n. Before we end this video, make sure you check out a site called LeetCode where you can practice these types of algorithm problems. And I'd highly recommend that you try out the first problem called 2sum, which is very similar to the question that we did. Anyways, I hope that you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next lesson.